What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Gamescoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis. Coop. Tina Amini. Was that Coop, like, cooped up? I heard a Coop, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just, just, coop. just and, technology. And Sam Claiborne. Just, I filled out the scoop. We, uh, we got a, I got a weird request from a fan asking us not to introduce you guys every week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't, that's the well, really you just really just do it once at the beginning of the whole show. Yeah. 11 years ago, right? And then you don't have to that's do true. it again. You that's just don't true. have to do it every time. That yeah. is true. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, we've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about the Game Gear Micro, the uh, weirdest uh, micro console yet, and probably the, yeast, the least useful. Uh, and we're going to flip through a 2000 issue of Game Pro Magazine with the oh exclusive first review of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. But exclusive first, review. <laughs> in the magazine, yeah. But right. first... Let's all wish Sam a happy birthday. Oh, hey. thank you so much. It happy is birthday, Sam's Sam. Birthday. Thank you. I'm, I'm exactly as old as Donkey Kong. Wow. You and Donkey Kong have a birthday. You also share yeah. a birthday with yeah. Earthbound. Whoa, really? Earthbound is 25 years old today. Maybe that's what ruined Earthbound sales is that they released it at the start of the summer. Uh, I don't know. Because that it's, used to be the death zone for games. But now we're coming to a time where it's like, hey, maybe that's not the death zone. It's not the death zone. I just uh, like it should be a great time because all kids are just home from school. They've got all hey, day to play video games. You're preaching to the choir here, Damon. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. I think summer <laughs> of gaming is the most accurate thing ever because that's when we should all be playing the damn video games. True. It is the death zone, however, for celebrating your birthday normally because of yeah. E3. Yeah. Yeah. I usually well. have a birthday at E3 and it's a tremendous bummer uh, going thinking about that ahead of time. And then it always ends up being really fun. Hmm. Um, are you as old as Donkey Kong, the character? Like that yeah. actual terrible the, the, gorilla? The machine. The machine. <laughs> the machine. Oh, well, no, because Donkey Kong must have been like, what, maybe, I think in his mid-30s by the time he was terrorizing Pauline. I'm <laughs> Exactly. I'm just assuming that there's yeah, some wait, wait. Nintendo manual or something <laughs> yeah. that's like Donkey Kong is 31 years old. Like, Damon Googling how old probably. is Donkey Kong. So, is gorillas it Mario something ridiculous? A, gorillas have yeah. a 35 to 40 year lifespan. Oh. So if okay. he was 30, Ooh. then he would be like a grandpa gorilla. Okay, that's Cranky Kong. Kong. That's as old as Kong is. That's covered already. This is like finding out. Yeah, this is like finding well, out that like your favorite fictional dog has been dead for like 20 years. Like he's not mm -hmm. here anymore. Donkey Kong. We, Donkey Kong's. We've talked about this before. Isn't the Donkey Kong from Donkey Kong Cranky Kong? Yeah. yeah. In Donkey yeah. Kong Country. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, but yeah. Diddy okay. Kong is not Donkey Kong Jr. And no. Diddy Kong is a chimpanzee, not a gorilla. Yep. The family tree makes yes. no sense because Diddy Kong is a nephew, but you don't know his mom and dad. They're like not, they're like unknown characters. Somebody's <laughs> out there saying it does make sense. And then we're going to get emails and I yeah. will field those personally. So Damon, you can forward me all those Donkey Kong yeah. family emails. Thank I will you. take care of them. Thank you for uh, jumping on that hand grenade. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned Summer of Gaming. Tina, we've got some updates on IGN's Summer of Gaming. Isn't that right? That's right. So we um, delayed our event uh, already uh, by a couple of days, but we actually wanted to issue another delay um, out of respect for getting out of the way of June 9th, uh, which is George Floyd's funeral. So we want to make sure that, you know, people have the room to be able to honor and respect that date um, without, you know, a lot of other things that, uh, you know, would be more appropriate following that when we've had a little bit of time um, to reflect after that. So we're going to kick off on June 10th now. Um, we should, at the time of this podcast recording, publishing should have a new schedule for everybody to look at and put on their calendars. Cool. So June 10th, that's next Wednesday, I believe. Oh, yeah. Very, very incoming very soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all still happening. And that's still like right around. That's like E3. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Our, that's our usual week where, you know, we have to forget about Sam's birthday and focus very yeah. heavily on usual news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK, I know uh, Tina has a heart out today, so let's get right, right into the show. Uh, let's share what we've been playing. And I have not been playing Final Fantasy VII Remake because oh. I finally beat it. Oh, wow. congratulations. Twist. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What did you think? Uh, I, I still... What what I was sort of explaining, uh, I guess, a couple of one or two episodes ago, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I think it overstates its welcome. 
Uh, there's a lot of filler in there. And uh, man, towards the end, it's sort of like a boss rush toward the end. The end of the game, the last few hours are kind of exhausting, I think. Uh, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, maybe Wait, not as what much. Did you, as... What did you do with your difficulty? Uh, I, I just kept it normal. It's just like, it just like, oof, you just got to like spend a lot of time on those, on those bosses. You just hit, hit them over and over again, huh? And the, so the ending, you know, I was expecting <laughs> something crazy with the ending. Um, but maybe like it, I didn't think it was that crazy because I, I, as I've said before, I only remember the broad strokes of the original game. So yeah. the ending okay. to this one was more no. confusing to me and I had to look up IGN's ending explained actually. Yeah. yeah. It's extremely yeah. crazy. The ending's so cool. Oh, I want to turn this into a spoiler cast so bad. <laughs> I don't I don't think I think we need to wait a little longer. Yeah, I think so too. But like it's it's such a the what the way they're handling this remake is so strange and unusual and I think we're going to be talking about it for a long time because like yeah. the ending to this game just feels like the ending to a one triple a video game like it feels as big and as momentous as any other big triple a game so it's like where do they go from there how do they top themselves i don't even know like i love like, it they set up a lot i mean yeah but like how i don't know how like they you already fought a god you fight a god at the end of this one so it's like okay where do we go from there i'll know. tell you where you go you start riding chocobos everywhere it's great yeah yeah J- J- the J- rpg JRPG teens are slaying gods all the time. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah, the first of many, exactly. And you can like you can like kill like you know like a sewer monster with a god. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's true. Speaking of gods, I only ever found Ifrit. Are there more summons in this game? Yeah. Yeah. Um. The your yeah. best mechanism is what's that kid's name again? Yeah. 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 The, it's the yeah. VR simulator kid. He, yeah. he, he challenges them, so you can get Fat Chocobo. Yeah. You can get yeah. Leviathan, which is Shiva. a really hard battle. Do you have to do the VR points. battles to get more summons? I never that's did the any only way to get them. Oh, no, I never that's, did any that's of actually not true. You can get summons. <laughs> yeah, you can you can pick up materia. Um, you know, I, I may have used our guide a couple times because I wanted to be thorough and, and make sure I found all the cool summons and and other materia. So there's one in like an air vent and you have to turn off the fan and then oh, you yeah. have to go behind the fan. You can find it. Yeah, I tried to give you that like heads up. Yeah, on I know you did. And I, I got it through that. That was a really tough puzzle. And you have to do a battle and then the puzzle and then get it. I think was that one for fat? No, that's not Fat Chocobo. That might be Shiva. It, it, no, it's uh, Shiva is through the VR simulation battle. Mm-hmm. It's a chocobo. Uh, it is a chocobo a related it's summon. It's a chocobo. That's yes, it yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, that one's that's really funny. Um, yeah, and, yeah the, I, I really like. I mean, I think the summons battles are like really great boss battles too. They're just a good part of that yeah. game, and you can go revisit those after you beat the game. Yeah, I like them too. Well, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for the next chapter, I do think it's interesting. And I think that we'll end up doing more of our uh, explicit spoiler cast when the next chapter comes out, because I think it'll be more relevant without spoiling things. The end's so cool, in my opinion. I know it's divisive, but I'm very much in the camp that thinks it was really interesting and such a fun thing to do. I like immediately Googled for um, our ending explained and other people's yep. too. So that's like my barometer for, am I really pulled in by this ending or not? And part of it was, I have no idea what's going on here because I didn't play the original and I don't know some of these characters or the context for some of these characters, but it ended up being really fascinating to read through. And I understand it a lot better now. <laughs> and Sam, are you still playing it? Yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah. I did play a little bit this week, but I've been playing a lot of other stuff. Okay. Such um, as? Yeah. Such as I'm glad you asked, Damon. So <laughs> I went through and I uh, played all of the latest um, uh, uh, Switch online games a lot, and cool. I, I took some notes. And okay. uh, there's there's some real turkeys in there, and it's very <laughs> funny. Uh, okay, so uh, we got Operation Logic Bomb. Yeah, what is that what, game? What type of game would you guys think that is? It sounds like you have to like uh, def- defuse like, bombs, like an extreme puzzle, puzzle game, maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it's a top-down shooter. Uh, it's a complete knockoff of the worst part of Contra Three. So oh, it's like okay. when you're going around Contra Three and you're, and you're you know top-down. That's what it is. Um, but you can choose from the start. You have a spread weapon and a and a machine gun weapon, and you can just choose between them. Why would you use the machine gun? It's insane. So that's really stupid. And then, but it does have the total Contra-style slap and bass and and synth or a uh, bass. Uh, I oh, mean, yeah. and synth. And uh, it's like, you know, it's just like completely crazy. Uh, But what I'm going to tell you to do is watch the intro. It's this long cyborg intro of like a man being created out of cyborg parts. And it's really, really I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, uh, We did not give that a rating. 
Uh, we also have uh, Wild Guns, which is also by Natsume, which yeah. uh, seems to be just like a cowboy game where you're like kind of like, you know, you got like a saloon, you're going to shoot everything. And then all of a sudden there's just robots everywhere. It's like first you're just murdering cowboys and then it's robots and then it's big robots and then there's spaceships. And so it's like kind of like pre, uh, well, it's, you know, it's steampunk and stuff like that before I ever heard that word. Uh, you can play as a cool Western uh, Victorian era lady. And she uh, shoots the crap out of the place. It's very funny. We gave it an eight. Hold on. Wild Guns was remade recently, like yeah, one or two years ago. 2016 um, for PS4 and uh, Xbox One. Went on Switch. I actually played it. I've played that on oh, Switch. Switch. Um, okay. And I, that's the game where I, I think I like the style and the uh, sort of cartooniness to it, but I don't like the way it feels or controls. I don't like yeah. I don't like the games where you move have to move a, like shooters where you move the cursor around the screen. Oh, it's horrible because you're yeah. moving the character and the cursor. So you're going like this. Yeah, that's yeah. not. Yeah. It's like like the home version of Operation Wolf. Yeah, is no nowhere near as good as the arcade version. All right, and then uh, there's Rygar. Rygar is just a Zelda like in the arcade. Mm-hmm. It was a crappy uh, side scroller, but it's a game where you have a thing called the disc armor, which is a shield that you kill things with because it's on the end of a string like a yo yo. It's very funny. But the 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 NES version is like totally playable and fun. But get a strategy guide. Play along you with the strategy need, guide. You need a strategy guide. Yeah, and it, and it's really fun to play with a strategy guide. Trust me, that's how people played it back then. That's how you should play it now. We gave it a seven. All right, get into the good stuff here. Eliminator, oh, Eliminator Boat Duel. Ooh, <laughs> cool. All right, so this is an NES game. Uh, no, no, it was made by some idiot Americans. Like, it's the stupidest possible game. It's it's just really, really stupid. So it, it's basically like Punch Out with boat races, and they have these like you know stereotypes that you race. Um, nothing I've seen too bad so far. But you start with a nerd. So you know the first a nerd. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, get, the nerd is like, oh, I hope you don't beat me in my race, you know. And then when you lose to him, you feel really bad. That guy sounds like an old man, but okay. Okay, well, he's a nerd, <laughs> and he's kind of old. Uh, but uh, it it has uh, it like confusingly it like shows like the flags drop, and it's like this big animated two speedboats taken off, and then it just does that for like. 10 seconds and you're like what am i doing like what's going to happen and then it switches perspectives so it looks really cool it's just like it's kind of like different camera shots none of it makes sense it's great uh it's unknown and widely unplayed so we have not rated it it's also unrated i'd give it a four for four you gotta check it out (laughs) Um, (laughs) that's a very confusing rating scale all right and then the final one is a pretty good game paddle to pond uh, that is, oh, yeah. it's inexplicable why this is on the, the Switch uh, online thing. It, yeah, it's why not Tetris just put it? Why not put Tetris Attack on? Yeah, which is a Yoshi themed puzzle game that has nothing to do with Tetris. So that's a really fun game. It's great. This is a fun game too, but it's a hundred percent in Japanese. I don't I, like. I have to hold my phone up to read any of the characters. And, hold uh, on. and if you, if you just Google it, there's quick you know explanations, numerous explanations of of what the menus in Pound Upon mean. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't use those. I just use Google Translate because it worked too. But it's ridiculous because everything's in Japanese, and like I think that's silly because there's there is a translation of it, and it has Yoshi in it, and it's so cool. I know. But if yeah. you haven't played this in this game, uh, it's basically instead of the Yoshi characters, it's little girls, and they each have a they fight over the seasons. So like mm-hmm. you fight like a summer girl and an autumn girl and like stuff like that. It's insane. Also, it was made by Gunpei Yokoi, the creator of the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy. Cool. And many other great things. That's it. We gave that an eight. <laughs> That's about right. Ah, so yeah, you did play a lot. All right. Did I do my job? Yes. Damon says I have to pull my weight more. That's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> He's never right. In our in our weekly Game Scoop uh, follow up <laughs> meetings. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, where we do yeah. post marts of our over our episodes. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think like actually more fun than the episodes, I think. <laughs> we should stream uh, those. better jokes. More information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a perfect example of why our postmorts are better. It's the, it's the time we're spending right now. Remember the time we talked too long there. about postmorts? Yeah. <laughs> Let's reduce that. <laughs> this is going to be a doozy this week, guys. Let's order Tina, Tina, what have you been playing? Um, so uh, I haven't had too much time to play uh, stuff, but I have been trying to entertain my two-year-old nephew. Um, so he is very into what he calls duck show, which is actually a goose game. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what he calls it. Um, but you know, that, that game is only a few hours long. So, uh, my brother and I, to entertain him, we're playing totally reliable delivery service, 
Hmm. Um, which is only entertaining for so long, but he seemed to love it and asked us and begged us to drive more trucks, which is very impossible to do. It's like, <laughs> it's like competitive co-op, um, with delivering packages kind of. Wait, so is if it, he calls, like if he calls goose game duck show, what does he call totally reliable delivery service? He calls it truck game. Cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he has a few words, a few mm-hmm. words that he likes and he just associates them with everything. Yeah. I feel like uh, Truck Game is marketable. I think that we could really truck game? make a pretty good game called Truck Game. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's an iPad game he probably already owns. He's very into trucks and construction yeah. vehicles and all that stuff. Who is it? <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Justin, how about you? Uh, I, I've i been playing a lot of stuff, actually. So there's a really, really cool PC uh, deck building card game that's inspired by Slay the Spire called uh, Monster Train. Is, and, is that the uh, one you said that's the most fun you've had to play a game this year? No, that's a different card game. I've okay. been on a whole journey of like <laughs> car- deck building card games this week. No, that was Grifflands. Um, Grifflands was in early access a long time ago, maybe a year ago. And like it's just about to exit early access and be version 1.0. And um, Grifflands is crazy cool. Um, it, it's a really story focused roguelite game. So. The story is sort of like you're going to meet different characters and make different friends and different enemies, and the story sort of unfolds in a dynamic way that's different each time you play the game. And uh, then you're building a deck of cards that let you, uh, you know, fight with people and do things like that. Um, but no, Monster Train. If you like Slay the Spire, it is very, very good. It is, mm-hmm. it's the best Slay the Spire like since Slay the Spire. Um, wow. Okay. It's great, Dan. Is, you'll is love it. Is there a train? There is a train. You're uh, you're driving a train through hell. Is oh. the premise of the game? I I understood it as you were like training monsters. No, no, no. <laughs> train. No, gotcha. no. Gotcha. It's it's much more literal than that. And uh, and as a result of all of this, I actually haven't played Say that Slay the Spire since it was very early access. Like the game didn't have it didn't have the fourth act. It didn't have the third or fourth character when like I was pretty heavy into it. So all of this has caused me to pick back up Slay the Spire too, and like I, you know, go through, explore the two characters and and decks and the the elements of that game I didn't play, and it remains one of the greatest games released in gosh I don't know the last five years certainly. Slay the Spire is amazing. Strong, uh, Sam. Sam, how hard are you not going to play all these games? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I mean, if there's if it's, if the best card game of all time comes out, then that's the one I should try, right? It, Slay the Spire is so good. I don't, like, I don't want to Slay take anything Spire. away from Grifflands or Monster Train because I really like them and enjoy them. But playing Slay the Spire really shows how that, just from a game design perspective, it is such a cut above anything else and the crazy stuff that it lets you do. I mean, Damon, you've played it a lot, right? Like Slay the Spire, yes. That game has a lot more willingness to like let you get nuts with like your cards of like if you set up the right combo, you can do 1,000 damage and it doesn't break yeah. the game. It's just set up in a really flexible way to like, it, it has the confidence to let you get really crazy with the stuff you can do in a way that mm-hmm. other card games don't. Yeah. It doesn't sound like Uno at all. Um, <laughs> I have a question that normally I'd ask Damon, but Tina, I'd like you to pass this on to your nephew. Are trains trucks? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> they're not. Cause <laughs> for I reasons, mean, I'm sure. Yeah, but, well, they're just not right. Are yeah. they? As but are trucks? You, you do call, Train cars. There's cars on a train. That's right. Yeah, that's true. So what's the train Sometimes track? literally. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they're not because trains are like attached cars carrying cargo as opposed to trucks are carrying cargo, but just on an individual level. Hmm. And I'm sure there has something to do with like the four wheels versus the tracks. I don't know. Well, let's, let's <laughs> take this to our, our uh, game yeah. content review uh, meeting and we'll, we'll figure it yeah. out. Exactly. Isn't it crazy to think? <laughs> That in the year, like today, the year 2020, there's still a whole career path for like train engineers. Yeah. You like can get you like go to school and sort of like. Did you hear about, did you, did you read about that monkey train switcher? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, from the like 1800s. I don't know if this is true. It's just like, you know, uh, like an image that's been circulating on social media. Like I said, did you know, they apparently trained a monkey to be a train it switcher. A, it was a baboon. A bab- excuse me, a baboon. Um, and he would switch the train tracks and it says he worked a shift every single day and never made a mistake. He, they, pay, they gave him, they paid him in one beer a week. Wow. I hope he got and a raise there's, to two. There's, there's a whole Wikipedia entry on him uh, that I read. Yeah. They, they, he worked for like seven years until he died and uh, 
reportedly never made a single mistake. What was the uh, what's the name of the baboon? It had an, like a human name. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was like Bob a or Jim or something. Name as opposed to. <laughs> I love this. I love this. There's a whole yeah. subgenre of these kinds of stories. Like I think there's like a bear that got promoted to lieutenant in the army. Yeah. <laughs> I just heard a podcast about that bear. He was paid in whiskey. At one point, that bear supposedly like carried like a you know a, a medical yeah. kit to, to a bunch of people and saved their lives. But mainly, they just got the bear drunk and they loved it. Yeah. In camp. That was like basically what it was. But then yeah. they gave it a drink. I wonder if one beer will get a baboon drunk. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, I mean, apparently, if he never asked for a raise. <laughs> so <laughs> once once a week, drunk once girl. a week, after a hard week of never making a single mistake, switching the line, he just got blasted and just like passed out drunk. <laughs> That's why he never made mistakes. He reserved it to one night alone. <laughs> right. What if, what if he did make a mistake? <laughs> like, it would have killed no dozens. Yeah, no beer that he week. No who beer. among us? Yeah, no beer. <laughs> who among us could say we've never made a single mistake at work? Um, all right, I've been, I've been playing a couple other games uh, since beating Final Fantasy VII. I've been playing Man Eater. You have? Yeah. I didn't have to try Man Eater. I want to try Man Eater. It's totally fun. Cool. It totally feels like uh, like the type of game you don't like a mid tier game that you don't see as often anymore, where it's a little bit. Uh, janky but totally fun uh, semi open world shark game where there's just there, there's lots of collectibles and stuff to find and hidden secrets and have you been mutate- a mutant shark yeah you I mean you mutate <laughs> pretty early on to where okay. uh, the, the, one of the earliest ones is you get the ability to shock your victims with electricity when you bite them mm. so it's pretty cool can you bite a nerd um you there's a lot you eat a lot of people the people don't have a lot of distinguishing characteristics, though. Okay. They all look like very similar. Uh, now you're uh, just thinking like a shark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But actually, a lot of the underwater environments are actually kind of like beautiful, uh, and they actually are able to generate a lot of variety in all the underwater areas that you're swimming through. And since you're underwater the entire time, well, not actually not the entire time. There's a lot of moments where you have to get on the land to eat people, yeah. and that's really. Do fun. you like? Do you like flop forward yeah. and like jump on them? Yep, that reminds don't. me of the uh, the famous Echo the Dolphin episode of Twenty Questions, in which I asked, "Can you cross the street?" <laughs> and Damon just lost his shit. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's you're really hard to control when you're out of the water, and then you you have like an oxygen meter that's running down, so you got to get back in the water. Uh, but then, since when you're in the water, it feels like a sort of like a flight combat game because you can just since you're just swimming around in any mm-hmm. direction. Anyway, it's totally fun. It's like a really fun summer game that you don't have to think about too much. Yay. I'm enjoying that a lot. Okay. And then on Switch, I'm playing Shantae and the Seven Sirens, mm-hmm. which is really, Every really Shantae fun. Game. Great. Uh, Great series. And I, I haven't even really played the series at all, um, but just I picked this one up. It looks really cool. It's a Metroidvania game that just looks and feels great. It has an awesome art style, uh, really like cute uh, sense of humor and stuff. So I'm really yeah, enjoying Shantae, that too. Shantae is uh, free on iOS with Apple Arcade. Well, yeah, I mean, Apple Arcade game. Is, is five bucks a month, but yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. It's actually, yeah. It's been on App Arcade for a while. Uh, just came to Switch. And I just I just chose yep. to play it on Switch. The monsters you, and feel that game are like pure Castlevania. It's really, really cool. And yeah. You compare... Sorry, the last thing I'll say is that you compare a PS4 controller to your Apple TV and just play, yep. you know, download and play Shantae. You don't have to deal with touch controls. Oh, that's a good point. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about the Game Gear... Micro. Hopefully everyone has heard about this. It's Sega's new micro console. It's a mini version of their handheld, uh, the Game Gear, which, <laughs> it's, like you know, it's so many. Do you have a it, picture of it, Damon? It's so much minier than people think it I'll is. I'll find one. I'll find one. Yeah. It's like, it's like this big. What's the deal, Damon? Are the games built in? Yeah. There's, so there's four flavors, four different colors. Each one comes with four games. Yummy. So it, it's, there's not just one system with a bunch of Game Gear games on yeah. it. Four different ones, each one with four different games. And um, is, it, is it bigger or smaller than the Game Boy Micro? Because that thing it's was also smaller. Like... It's smaller than the Game Boy Micro. Because the Game Boy Micro had, to, yeah, the Game Boy Micro had to take a cartridge. So I guess by skipping the cartridges and you know whatever new screen technology, the screens from the from the images I saw didn't look that great, and that doesn't really matter. But I, I think smaller than like your yeah. phone would be. Oh, it's like much. Your, it's like, your, yeah, your hands would be like here. Yeah, yeah. It's like a quarter the size of a phone. Isn't that crazy? Look but, at 
I think it's mainly meant to be collected wow. in play. It honestly looks so, really uncomfortable to play. Yeah, yeah and the, the screen is literally one inch wide. It's Aww. one inch. It's one like what? Inch. You can't see it. You can't. You, you can't hardly control it because the buttons are so tiny and close together. Mm-hmm. I don't it's like crazy. that. Crazy. That hand is making me uncomfortable. Uh, okay. It almost looks like the Game <laughs> Scoop logo. It almost looks like you photoshopped the Game Scoop logo on there, but it got so smushed in the process. That's how mm-hmm. small it is. I can make out a Game Scoop logo. <laughs> Yeah, the blue and blue and yellow of Sonic. Yeah, it's, it's the like same colors. Up. Yeah, well, it's like so weird. It's like if they had actually made a proper you know, Game Gear yeah. uh, micro reproduction, like that would be actually might be kind of cool. But this is like going to be so hard to play. I, it's going to be just a novelty for hardcore collectors. I think. I have some good news though. You don't want to play a Game Gear. No. Yeah, I that's agree. the other part of it. The Game it's Gear was never. The Game Gear wasn't exactly a smash hit. You know, yeah, back yeah. then. Ports, I had a bad ports of of, of OK games. Yeah, it's a lot of like Master System, you know, sort of semi upgrades and Genesis downgrades. I was a, I mean, I had a Game Gear growing up, and like, you know, I was a Sega kid, not a Nintendo kid, as I've said before. And like, you know, the Sonic Two on Game Gear with the hang gliding, like, I have, I played it a lot, but like, now in hindsight, it's like mm, not a, not a very great or memorable or important game library. Yep, it's sold, like Castlevania on the Game Boy. Sold fewer units than uh, the Wii U. Ooh. Yeah, it's like oh, around it's around 10 minute 10, 10 yeah, million units. It did have a radio tuner you could like glom onto it <laughs> for TV. For a TV. Yeah, cool. a TV tuner. Yeah. Um of the colors I'd probably go with the yellow one cuz that one has three shining force games Ooh. on mm-hmm. it. And if then you another get all of them, you can get a magnifying glass or whatever the hell else. Yeah. To actually be able Which to is apparently things. apparently was uh, an actual Game Gear accessory from back in the day. Oh, so they made the tiny version of the magnifying accessory? Apparently. If you buy all four of them in one pack, you get the magnifying glass as well. And how much is that pack? Do we know yet? Two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's wow. Kind of, it seems so much more like just a collectible nostalgia yeah, just, like thing. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. really functional. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Interesting, but man, we're really, I'll really with, weird and strange. I'll stick with my HUDs and shot watch. Endless hours of entertainment. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Uh, shot clock, shot watch, the little thing I have to test um, your button. Pressing. Oh yeah. That thing's yeah, that great. One. Shooting yeah, watch, I think that's what it's called. That thing is it, awesome. It has at least an hour of entertainment. <laughs> yeah, at least <laughs> one hour of entertaining button mash. All right. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. There you go. Oh, oh actually, hold on. I'm going to come back to me in one second. I'm going to share something else with you. What? What's really happening? Really quick. <laughs> is it a cat? Because someone just woke up from a nap. Aww. Aww. Oh, look what a pro he's already going for the yeah. microphone. Hey, can you just hey, go hey, ahead hey. and ask about the truck train question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need a consultant. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Was that a turtle? Gone. No, that was a hippo. I think uh, that's his hippo wubbinub. Justin, did you guys, did you guys have wubbinubs? No. When the girls were smaller? No. And we did, with my older daughter, we did pacifiers. And with the younger one, it was very hard to get the older daughter off the pacifier. So the younger one, we never even introduced pacifiers. Wow. He's so going to put that mic in his mouth soon. Yeah, I, I feel say, it. Yeah. There I he feel goes. It. There oh, he goes. I feel it. <laughs> Ever share a mic with Damon. All right. He's going to eat some lunch now. I can go. Okay. You know, Damon was so young when he started Game Scoop that he used to put the mic in his mouth all the time. It was really yeah. weird. <laughs> Every Damon, great don't... podcast host starts off the same way. It's just an it's... immediate natural instinct. He had to be swatted out. <laughs> He had to be pulled into Tal's office and said, "Look, man, you don't. <laughs> you got to stop putting the mic in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Other people have to use that mic." Okay, you guys can see the Game Pro cover here. Yeah, yeah. If I put uh, my window in full screen, does that take away the previews on the side? Yes. Okay. Cool. So as you can then see, August. Can... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say for the for Sam and Tina, we can click on you so that we can okay. see the picture okay. in full screen. Yeah, that works better. Good. There you go. So we got the August 2000 issue of Game Pro, Tony Hawk 2 on the cover, exclusive first review, they say. And speaking of Echo the Dolphin, they've got the Dreamcast version of Echo in this uh, issue too. A very, very 90s skater look. There's a lot that's going to be 90s about this issue, even though it's from the 2000s. But Well, wow. <laughs> Uh, who wants to be a millionaire uh, for PlayStation? Why? Featuring... He's so young. 
Yeah, an ad, an ad with Regis Philbin and just the most fake looking $10 bills ever. Okay, yeah, I don't know a lot money. about Regis Philbin, Philbin, but if he looks young here to you, <laughs> what does he look like now? Well, he's exactly. 20 years older now. <laughs> yeah, we all look much older. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they couldn't just get real $10 bills. Yeah, those are clearly fake. For this That's ad. Hilarious. And this is an ad for uh, NFL Game Day 2001. And I don't really understand what it's trying to say. The copy says, uh, from the new play as any skill receiver feature to the tons of new perfectly scaled motion captured animations, we've captured the power and athleticism of the NFL. It'll get in your head and stay there. And we have a guy who's apparently sleeping. He's dreaming of girls. And then he starts dreaming about the football game. But then he goes to, on to dream about cars. cars. So yeah. it did, it's so all it the didn't boys stay stuff. In, it didn't stay in there. I don't it's know. No, see, because it's because it's like squarely in the center of these two things, oh, it's actually okay. metaphorically indicating how much the center of his thoughts the NFL okay. is. Okay, that's definitely good. the reasoning. Okay, that's <laughs> thanks for uh, yeah. yeah. It's that's very stuff. smart of nine eight nine sports. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here's an over uh, the rating system explained, and I guess I didn't realize it was actually a ten point scale, going up to five in point five increments. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and they have a little animated guy. All right. Little guy, yeah. So the wor the worst score right, possible. Ten point scale that goes to five. It <laughs> goes to five. So yeah, the, the their equivalent of a ten is just a really ex excited face. Their nine would be two thumbs up and eight would be one thumb up. This is like the medical ten point scale where it's just a fr a face getting more and more frowny as the more more pain yes, indicates. It's a, yeah, what's your level of pain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so their one, their one is two thumbs down. Their two is one thumb down, but then their uh, three is it smells bad. Mm. <laughs> you know, do you think we can get Dan to tell us what he's going to score a game by turning around at his desk and doing these motions? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think we should take like frame by frame pictures to have him yeah, visualize no. what each of our scores are for sure. And be like, Dan, what's that going to be? And then he'll turn around and he'll be... Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stick with this rubric that's this precedent that's been set for us, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> well he can make his own hand symbols, frankly. I don't know. His own man. So an ad for Tang in a Capri Sun package. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I never, all the rage. They were all the rage. Uh, increases lunchtime trading power by three hundred percent. I'm not sure well, how they came up with that number. But it's like they're talking okay, about like so wait. So trade don't don't drink it. Trade it for what you really want. <laughs> like yeah, what? Exactly. Wow, that's, that's true. And if we're time if, lunch trading, I thought they were talking about like Pokemon cards or something. But yeah, it's about like get the you can get the best snacks in your life because you have this. Yeah. <laughs> Although they are saying by virtue of it going over a hundred percent, they are trying to qualify that it is more. It is likely going to be better by this percentage than any other snack. Yeah, you'll That's get why you have that power. You'll get three high C's in return for each tang you exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just better value. <laughs> Total carnage! Okay. Wow, and for Star Wars demolition, I just love a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Total carnage! <laughs> Wait, this, did this ever come out? I was gonna say I do yeah, not. Okay. I don't recognize this at all. Like I and I, I, you know, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of Star Wars game, but I I've remember never the heard. Movie. The weird fighting game and like the other ones that they made. I've never heard of this. I think it's an arena, a vehicle arena combat game in the Star Wars so universe. I, play it. I, I feel bad for the Rancor. I feel like the Rancor there is a little underpowered. Is the Rancor yeah, a, a vehicle? Little unprotected. Well, I mean, you uh, kill the Rancor with a door. So any of these things are just going to be <laughs> outmatching it. Um, this is an ad. This ad is confusing to me. It's an ad for San Francisco Rush 2049 with three. I people sitting outside a tv store watching the game from outside it says stunt battle and race freaks unite so those things are all represented by these three different dudes but like why are they watching this outside the tv store yeah i mean that the core message of like of oh me. these three oh, yeah. very different guys are coming together for rush like that makes sense yeah but it's very passive yeah. I guess if well, they're yeah, trying why? to say they're from different groups they wouldn't be like hanging out in each other's basement mm -hmm together so maybe, that's why yeah, it would have maybe. to be you know they meet each other on the street like they're yeah. all drawn by the window shopping and they become friends in this great big moment yeah, i'm over explaining right. too many ads <laughs> no, no i like not. it like, are like serious artifacts that are no. hard to understand now tina uh, you're I completely think, yeah. right i promise yeah i bet you're exactly right where it's like well wait but these guys aren't friends so where would they come together 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, What's the most reasonable storyline here for this one page ad? They could have just shown them in the arcade watching the game. That's what's really confusing about this. And uh, yeah. also Log's TV Emporium. I'm pretty sure that's a reference to Ed Log, who uh, created mm. Centipede and Asteroids, among other things, and may have been continuing at Midway at this time. Yeah, it's uh, crazy that that's the focal point of the ad. Because we're pick up the Atari the... published game in the arcade, and he definitely worked for Atari. Did you guys pick up that the address of Log's TV Emporium is 2049 Rush Street? No, we can't. That's very, that's blurry for me. Yeah, same. Oh, sorry, yeah. Good catch. Um, and then this ad. <laughs> it's completely blurry. <laughs> for, look, yeah. Hold on. This is, a, hold on. It says his legs, this is for an Olympics, uh, official Olympics game. It says his legs take him 200 meters in 19.32 seconds. How fast are your fingers? <laughs> Oh, oh. Out that it... <laughs> yeah. That's some disturbing imagery. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thanks, I Let's move on. So awful. No, no, no. It's also it's, but his it's also fingers. the Sydney. It's the his Sydney 2000 Olympic fingers. Games. The Sydney Australia 2000 Olympic Games, and it says, "Let the games begin, mate." Um, <laughs> Do you think Sydney? That's called actually, localizing. Yeah, yeah, localization. Good one. That was a good joke. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think they probably set that up in Australia. Yeah, you know, like that's probably yeah. what the slogan of their Olympic Games was. Maybe the, the, the I don't official know. slogan. I can only see Sonic. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, we've got our head to head. You have um, an, a letter from the editor, which. For some reason, it's not signed by any specific editor. It's just signed yeah. the Game Pros. <laughs> yeah, that's rude. That's not usual. And, you should uh, always have it by somebody. Yeah, I know. Uh, and apparently, they they like make fun of their readers a lot in their letters, and they've got uh, people writing in asking them to be nicer to their leaders or to their readers. Um, but I, I'm not going to go ahead and read that one. Which one did I want to read here? Oh yeah, worried about Nintendo. I'm seriously concerned for Nintendo's future and hope it starts kicking major ass again like in the NES days. I'm getting tired of the cute crap. I hope there are more games for the dolphin like Perfect Dark. Nintendo should do more ballsy things. Us kids can handle it. I sincerely hope that Nintendo returns to being the undisputed ruler of the video game world. I this mean, guy's been, been dreaming about uh, football and cars and ladies. <laughs> There's a yeah. but there is a real fear like the N64 got its butt kicked by the uh, by the PS1. And the GameCube didn't do that poorly, but like, you know, it yeah. wasn't using the full size discs that the other consoles were. And like Sega stopped making consoles. Like there was an era that like if you're a younger gamer and Nintendo's so dominant now, maybe it doesn't seem likely, but like there was a concern that like, dude, is this company gonna like go away? <laughs> like are they yeah. just like like it, it was a very real concern of mine as a big Nintendo fan, even like yeah. it it was a. Uh, you know, they could fade away in the same way that other video game companies did. And now, you know, they figured so much out with the Wii and the Switch, and I feel like their identity is a lot more confident and self-assured um, than it was than it was at that time. Yeah, for sure. Now, listen to this, uh, this email, A Gentleman Thief. I've just learned how to copy PlayStation games onto compact discs. I've seen a lot of websites that sell copied games. How much are copied games actually worth? When I make my own site and start to sell them, I don't want to rip people off. Oh. <laughs> oh <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's going to so copy what, games and sell them, but he doesn't want to rip people off. Uh -huh. mm. huh? what, what's their response? Uh, the nice answer is that what you are planning to do is not nice. It's called stealing. In this case, <laughs> from Sony and PlayStation game developers. It's illegal and you should stop immediately because Sony and the FBI are already hunting you down. You wouldn't right. download a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Which of these letters did I want to read here? Are those? Uh, did somebody mock up a Game Pro cover on the right there of Spider Man? Yeah. Jakey Spider. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cute. Oh, and then I like it here. It says if if you ever want to get um in co um in contact with the writers of game pro, they give all their email addresses, but they're all fake names like four eyed dragon, bro buzz, uncle dust. How do you know which editor you're actually emailing? Well, that was all. They all wrote under pseudonyms. So you so just like have no to go to the name article you're upset about. Yeah. That's like, that's a fake name. And then that, write the fake name. That was game pros thing for like scary. Larry, you know, was the one reviewing games. That was always their stick. 
I don't know anything um, about Game Grumps. This is crazy. They wrote they okay. wrote all their stuff under pseudonyms. <laughs> this is an ad for Rice Krispies treats, <laughs> but I don't understand it. It's it's an action figure climbing the bar, and it just says "Great for rock climbing." It's like, I don't get it at all. What? And then, I can't explain this one. Oh, okay. Tina, you are you are our only hope. Is there um, is there any copy for Tina to translate? Yeah, there? yeah. Give me more context. It says "Great for rock." Great for rock climbing, Rice Krispies treats, best when eaten. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, was there no. like a relevant game they were making a pun off of? I think I have this. I think I, I have this. It's because Rice Krispies treats up until this point were not available in individual packaging. So if you wanted to put them in your pocket, it was really easy to do action sports while putting them in your pocket. So they wanted rock climbers to think Maybe. like, Oh, this yeah. is cool. You can take this like, on the go. You like this is like a Nutrigrain thing or something. Exactly. An exactly. energy bar. Exactly. Yeah. And okay. It's pre yeah. energy bar too. So yeah. like, back then you just had to cram a Snickers in your mouth if you're rock climbing. So this is, yeah. you know, the healthy wow. alternative. They I should revisit you're... and say like, you know, the original energy bar <laughs> and label yeah. them that way today. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was probably the beginning days of them just being packaged up and sold individually. Yep. The website is bestwheneaten.com. <laughs> Maybe don't go to that now. <laughs> Be careful out there, people. All right. Buyers beware. <laughs> I just realized. Uh, buyers beware. This is their watchdog uh, section. Someone writes in to say, I recently discovered a glitch in Perfect Dark for N64. The game freezes when I play a three-person multiplayer match on Challenge 7. Is there something wrong with my game? Uh, The watchdog says, a Nintendo customer service rep responds, this is a known problem with the first version of the game. It locks up during Challenge 7, the warehouse level when playing a three-person game. You can play that level with no problems. However, in a one, two, or four-player match, the problem has been fixed in later versions. Give us your address, and we'll pick up your copy of the game and send you a new one free of charge. Oh, that's really sweet of them. Uh, Back then, Nintendo... That's what they had to do before patches. Is. Yep. There's three versions of Ocarina of Time, and I remember on a show on Game Scoop a while ago, I brought all three on and, and discussed the difference. Remember that? Yeah, That's the, when we got yeah. the um, we found the Star Fox uh, uh, yep. R wing in the game. They changed the blood color, right? And even some of the the sound yeah. music changed. Yeah, Ganon has green blood in the later versions. Yeah, which although, I think is although cool. when it says when it says give us your address and we'll pick up your copy of the game, are they coming to this guy's house? <laughs> What, yeah, what does that, that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'll pick up the tab, and I think that's Nintendo talking, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. Nintendo customer service rep. That's incredible. Customer um, service. The top ten. Uh, yeah, I know it's amazing. Nintendo in two thousand. Top ten best-selling video game titles. June two thousand. Number one was Perfect Dark, but number two is the Jam Pack Summer Two K, which is a PlayStation demo disc. So I don't know why oh, that's in the top ten bestsellers. That's so silly. I, I, I think did they you buy them for like five dollars at the time? I, I, I seem to remember something like that. Yeah, but that may also be like this is an IDG publication, and they may have published a PlayStation magazine at the time. So there, there may yeah. be a little bit of. I don't know that that's the case. I'm just speculating. Yeah, or that's just yeah. yeah the best selling part is weird to that. That's right. And then what there's a little the- uh, feature here on Indrima, the fifth console, uh, which is going to be a Linux console that they wanted to release in like 2001 which what? is like so it kind of like, sounds like an ouya you know several years before the ouya was a thing although the i, I looked it up the andrema never came out no yeah what's the what does the fifth mean is that because dreamcast was still around dreamcast yeah. was still there in 2000 okay dreamcast was only a year old in 2000 yeah okay um yeah uh, there's an article here. We don't need to get into this, but it's about Soldier of Fortune was uh, banned in British Columbia because of its extreme graphic violence. Hmm. If you like surfing the net, it's time to catch the next wave <laughs> with Jam. Jamonline.com. You, digital. And apparently cool. Jam makes other stuff. Cool tools for the internet and beyond. There's the Jam Cam, which lets you snap <laughs> cool digital <laughs> pics. Jam P3 lets you download digital music and go. Jam wow, Studio lets you build a website and Jam It lets you record, morph, and mix sounds. Wow. Jam P3. I love that. Yeah. Huh. And you get a paper coupon there to take to Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a feature about uh, Activision's games coming to Game Boy Color. And I, a comic strip that I just didn't understand at all. <laughs> 
Um, I guess there was a heavy metal game, like heavy metal based on the uh, issue. Whoa. Yeah. Based on the heavy metal magazine, I guess there was a game and the copy says our game will kick your game's ass. (laughs) That's how hardcore it is. Understandable. I don't remember this game either. Lord. There's a feature on Digisense, that Uh, accessory that would allow you to smell your games. Yeah, I heard about it's called the I yeah. The actual product was called the I smell. Mm -hmm. I had apparently actually came out. Yeah, it had an install base. People people really liked it. You could put little things on your site where you'd smell roses and it was just like there was so much I guess positivity and, and and you know future thinking about the internet at that time. Yeah, although this main example doesn't seem super positive. No. no. Yeah, smell the wrestler's armpits. Yeah, not not my favorite. <laughs> I had a uh, I had I had smelling like game smell some version of this demoed for me at CES when I worked at IGN. Gosh, I don't know, six or seven years ago, and it was a it was a really really sad demo because you know you put this they have the scent thing that's like blowing in your face. Is it? Can you smell the burning rubber from the cars? And I'm like, I, like not really. Like, no, I can't. And he's like, oh, <laughs> <That's> weird. <laughs> and then and then that was it. Uh, this is an ad, another confusing ad. Uh, Tina, tell us what you make about this. It's uh, an ad for Time Splitters on PlayStation 2. Copy says, death has never been faster. And here we have the Grim Reaper shopping for a sports car. Um, so I guess he's, it's... Ex- he's going to be so much faster in a sports car coming to get everybody. <laughs> but it's not a racing game. Yeah. It's a first-person shooter. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Do we have a it's supposed to be like a mean? difficulty thing, like a, like a tease, like it's coming for you. Yeah, maybe like the special game. guest on, on uh, Tina's screen. Oh yeah, uh, I think everyone can only see. Dan's oh, I can't screen. see you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, and finally, their exclusive first review of Tony Hawk to Skate Expectations is their uh, strap line. It's pretty good. I bet Dan would have <laughs> would have let us use that one. And they gave it a almost straight fives. One oh. one four point five for graphics. Do you think the kids were really hip on that Charles Dickens pun? <laughs> 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 chairman of the board is another pretty good uh strap yeah. on these in this article here oh, um another ad for san francisco rush 2049 two ads which apparently came out magazine. in gameplay color now that i can see yeah dreamcast and nintendo 64 as well uh it says get san francisco rush 2049 for your dreamcast and nintendo 64 at sears electronics department well, yeah, and this ad too. this is an that's us, yeah. No Salesforce. Um, no Salesforce. <laughs> um, this is a, a crazy Nintendo and Walmart ad. It says, you'll ask to be sent to your room. The copy reads, <laughs> because you just want to play your Nintendo. After all, you're a hardcore gamer, ready to take on any challenger who dares to step into your domain. And you can always find your next opponents waiting at Walmart. From Nintendo 64 systems to Game Boys, we have all the latest Nintendo games and accessories at our everyday low prices. Hey. Who knew going to your room could be this much fun? Nintendo equals Walmart. Got it? <laughs> oh boy! You know, Nintendo I, equals time, Walmart. I think like kids like usually like I remember there was a push and pull between parents and kids to have a TV and a console in your room. Like that was like a pretty pretty big stretch for some parents, including mine. Um, eventually got one. Felt pretty cool. <laughs> uh, this is a weird feature on the the playstation 2 launch games called pay for play and it says two 20s and a 10 will get you any of the playstation 2 launch games assuming there are some left on the shelves now that you're ready to spend some cash take a look at your 25 options for a little advice on how to spend your 50 bucks so it's like a write-up on each game with like why you should care and why you might not but i mean why is each one this is crazy well right i think maybe part of the argument is like in 64 games are expensive right like the carts were not okay. 50 bucks like that's yeah. part of the reason why the ps1 well but this is ps2 yeah 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 it's just a really I, strange I, yeah. way to frame their launch game lineup feature. yeah if, if this were like 95 instead of 2000 but yeah that's crazy yeah have we reached for the ultimate fighting out? championship what's that have we reached the hard out almost we have she should have five minutes yeah uh, it's an ad for Ultimate Fighting Championship that says it's hard to say uncle when you don't have any teeth. And actually, I think you could say uncle without any teeth. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think so, too. Uncle. 
right? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing you it right now. You can't tell him while you, while you hold your nose. That's true. An ad for Half-Life uh, coming to Dreamcast. And uh, you'll notice the gear... Well, maybe you can't see it, but there's a Gearbox logo on the bottom. Oh. Um, oh. And I actually didn't realize that Gearbox handled the ports to uh, oh. PlayStation 2 and Dreamcast. Oh. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. a Dreamcast version of Half-Life? Yeah. That's fine. And I, yeah. Wow. And here's a PC preview for Halo. Yeah. Mm. It yeah. says this... This third-person action adventure looks to redefine the way you think about game narratives. Wow. It in looks- Halo, you'll play as a military unit in Earth's expanding empire in the distant future, using Whoa. your arsenal that ranges from swords and bombs to land, sea, and air vehicles. It's so generic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. There's no mention of Xbox here. It no, says it's hey, a third-person action adventure game coming to PC. It was, it was originally Mac. It was a Mac exclusive yeah. for a while. It was on their uh, conference, like, no less. That's how it yep. was debuted. Yep. Wow! Which is like, there's no in the year two thousand. In the year two thousand, the Xbox would have been announced as to be yeah, coming. Right. So I, it's so strange. Oh man, what a cool uh, artifact! <laughs> and then <laughs> we know this one. We found this one yep. recently. It's Austin Powers on Game Boy Color, and uh, you'll see the Rockstar logo right there at the bottom. Whoa! So funny. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have like uh, all these game. Game Boy color games and, and Game Boy Advance games in the office uh, from the archives, and we we're digging through them, and uh, we found uh, this one with a Rockstar logo, and couldn't believe it. Now, I'm <laughs> only showing this to you because I don't, I can't bear the burden of having seen this image. Oh by God, myself. that's not how that's not how it works. <laughs> you do something gross, you're not supposed to have. You're so bearing of burdens. <laughs> It's, it's just like the ring. Company. I need to. I have to pass. I have to pass this curse on to other people. For the lucky <laughs> listeners who who are just listening to the show, this is an ad for a wireless controller that shows a man giving birth in a hospital room to the controller, and the doctor's about to cut the umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. And it's a sight to see. Let me tell you. And the whole purpose of this is to show that there's wireless controllers that exist. There wasn't yep. a better way of representing that. No one no could possibly way. understand the concept. <laughs> now I know. There was apparently a Miss Pac-Man game called Maze Madness for PlayStation. I never realized that. Oh, yeah. Never that heard of that. Okay. Dude, that Star Wars game. Ooh, is still yeah. You glossed over one of uh, Rockstar's best oh, games yeah. ever, Midnight Club. Midnight Club? There, uh, yeah. There's an ad for it down there, yeah. Mm-hmm, I actually never played mm-hmm. that one. I'm just oh, trying to really get to this. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's basically Austin Powers. Same thing. Oh, look, he's still dreaming. Uh, yeah, this time he's dreaming about girls in ice hockey and a vacation, a, a beach it's vacation. It's the same ad? Man, yep, weird. well, it's but, but for a, a different sports game. I didn't know there was a Mike Tyson boxing game on Ooh. PlayStation. Yeah, this is not a good time to make a Mike Tyson game either. They should have known better. Yeah, Terrible. Totally weird. I didn't, know, I didn't know there was Worms Pinball oh, on PlayStation. Sam? <laughs> oh, and Did finally, you know? finally no this is the last page. This is the last place. Uh, it's Lara Croft, The Legacy Lives On for PlayStation, uh, PC, and Dreamcast. But I don't know what Tomb Raider game this would have been in the year 2000. It and just says Lara dead. Croft, The Legacy Lives On, and that's it. Uh-huh. Maybe mm. she died in the game, and this is like a memorial, and that's like a hint that there's going to be more. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, some sort of story reference. And that was a look at the August 2000 issue of Game Pro. Uh, we did it. Tina, I guess we'll have to let you go yeah, and we'll, good we'll luck, handle, guys. We'll handle video game yeah. 20 questions. For yeah, sure. Guys, we'll on you. What's that? Do you, do you have a guess for the game? Uh, I do. Okay. She's she's trying to rub her face on my mic right now. <laughs> ah, she heard oh, guess. guess or a guest. Yeah. I like, I like where we went with that. Yeah, do you have a game guess for us? Um, well, I have um, <laughs> 2049 in my head, so I'm just going to say okay. Cruising USA. Just keep right. that in mind. Yeah. All right, got it. I saw <laughs> right, game. Bye. And that brings us to video game 20 questions. Our suggestion this week comes from John from Baltimore. Let the questioning begin. All right. Hmm. hmm. Could could this game have been in the episode of Game Scoop or uh geez, Game Pro that we flipped through? It could have been. Wow. Oh, it could oh. be San Francisco or uh, Daytona. <laughs> uh, Cruise in USA. Yeah, we haven't eliminated it yet. <laughs> so that, that could have been 
means either it's a very very old game uh-huh. or or it's like something that was coming up like maybe it was coming out in 2001 or so and could have been a preview mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. or it's just so stupid and old <laughs> that there would be very little chance that it would be in that magazine is this from yeah. before 1990 yes okay okay so silly and old yeah did this was this game released on the nes yes was this uh, uh, was this game uh, ported from or to other systems? Yes. Okay, it was on other systems. Cool. Was this an arcade game? Uh, yeah, yes. That's five. Okay. Mm. Was this game? game yes. Yeah. Was this game uh, created in the United States? No. Okay. Um. Do you play as a human? Yes. Play as a human. Was this game created in Japan? Yes. Do you play? <laughs> oh, we got. We you see Borba. Yeah. Do you shoot guns? No. Okay. See. Yes. Oh, an arcade game. Well, there's not too many of those. I mean, there's a ton. But does this take place <laughs> in the past? No. Oh, That's not ten. Ra- it's not Rygar. <laughs> okay. Is it could be like a Strider type game? Yeah, is this a do you is this a slashy game? Are you slashing slash them up? No. Wow, you're not not shooting or slashing, but it's an arcade game. Could be panel de pawn. <laughs> it's just a little early for that. Yeah, you're right. But it yeah. could be like, you know, Tetris or a puzzle game or something like that. That'd be interesting if it was Tetris. Um. Okay. Is Borba. this a side scrolling game? Is it a side scrolling game? Yeah. No, you wouldn't. You, no. Is it a silk single screen game? <clears throat> yes. That's what I guess. Okay. It's yeah. a single screen game with just a that's little bit of a little yeah, bit of this. Okay. A little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, that's really helpful. Mm-hmm. Could be. Well, I don't. I don't think. I don't know. A little bit of that. Would I Cubert? <laughs> no, you play as a human though. No one knows what Cubert is. Yeah. That little the Pac Man versions of NES are like that. Um, yeah. So, wait. So, okay. Japanese made arcade game from the 80s. You don't shoot or slash things. Uh, you play as a human. And it's got a little, some light scrolling to the screen. That's weird. And it can, remember, remember you, you know, this is an NES game, and the NES game is. Far, far more popular than the arcade game it's based yeah. on. It could be, could be Wild Guns. That's a Super Nintendo game. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, like an obscure arcade game. I just but, don't know where to go because so many of these answers have been no. That's the, that's always the hard thing for us. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm thrown off by the not shooting or slashing. Is this a and and it could be top down or something. Yeah, is it top down? No. Okay. okay. Is it uh, Okay. I, I think this is probably a, a game made by Nintendo that was in a play choice cabinet. Something wait, like that. You can ask if it was made by Nintendo. Yeah, was this a Nintendo game? No. That's 15. It's still right. be in choice. 15. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. But uh, I mean, hmm. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's something that maybe like it's like Clue Clue Land or like something that defies genre definitions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't really know. What was the Namco? I mean, Clue Clue Land was Nintendo like Rally X, you know, <laughs> like something like that. I would say Castlevania, but it doesn't take place in the past. Um, A little bit of scrolling. This, well, I just got to get out of that. I mean, I would. Oh, everything is so. From do Japan, you, it's going to be Konami or Capcom or something like that. It'd be nice to know. Do you drive or pilot a motor vehicle in this game? No. Hmm. It's not Rally X. <laughs> no, that never came out for NES. Um. Man. So you're on foot. You're a human on foot. Hmm? Better than yeah. you're not. Sh- you're, you're not shooting, and you're not slashing. What's Borba mm-hmm. saying? Oh, Borba saying a sports game. 
Yeah, maybe. Arcade sports game that came to NES. That mm-hmm. Made in Japan, though. Yeah, you can go for it. Is this a sports game? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> so, Thank you, John. RBI Baseball was it was an arcade game that was made in Japan and on NES. Track, track and Field. Track and Field was Konami, definitely in the arcade. Not really famous on the NES, but still. Yeah, it's super famous on the NES, isn't it? Or is that a different one? That's like, NES one? I mean, that's what I, I mean, maybe it's not famous, but me and my friends played it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, did it use the, yeah, yeah, did it use, when it, when you played it at home, did it use, was it famous for using like a peripheral controller, like a non-standard? No, no, that's World Class Track Meet. Oh, is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's made by Nintendo. Um, yeah, I guess right. we were just ask, is this like a, you know, is this based on the Olympics? You're, is this based on the Olympics? Yeah, or like, uh, what is it called? I don't even know what to call those type of games. Is this does a, it have does it have lots of different games in it? Yeah. Uh, no, it's just one game. Okay. RBI is it a, baseball? Is it a baseball game? No. Oh, that no. brings us. That brings us <laughs> to question twenty. Um. Okay. I guess I was gonna say, like, I I don't do double dribble. Like, I feel like double dribble is only on the NES. We've already had double dribble as one of these. It it won't be double. And it was an arcade. So so, what other sports it left? Like, I mean, obviously, it's a million sports. It could be double dribble. But we did just have it. Damon wouldn't do that to us. Yeah, yeah. Black Bass and the Blue Marlin, but I think like Damon kept indicating that this was a popular NES game, and that's going to be Tech Mobile or Double Dribble or RBA Baseball. The little bit of scrolling is actually a pretty good clue. It could be the what was a really good hockey one with the fat, medium, okay. and skinny players. A little Ice bit of hockey scrolling indicates high hockey for sure, or double dribble, or yeah, there was like wind jammers, air yeah, volleyball, but ice hockey was made by Nintendo. Yeah, but there's blades of steel, and I, I think that's what it could be too. We just have to pick whether it's blades of steel, double dribble, or RBA baseball. No, no, we know when it's on RBA Baseball. So it's Blades of Steel or Double Dribble. And we've had Double Dribble on before, so I'm going to go with Blades of Steel. Yeah, I, I, I support you. Yeah. And, and just as a reminder, it's not top down. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Whatever. Right. Uh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, okay. Yeah, well, dribble, right? I don't know. I don't, <clears throat> I don't like throat> having the wind taken out of my sails there, right at the. <laughs> Is it double dribble? No, it is not double dribble. I'm sorry. You guys know this game, uh, but you were nowhere near it. It is super dodgeball. Oh, oh yeah. We would have got there. We were getting a little bit that close there. Yeah. If, um, fun fact about Super Dodgeball, released in 1989, published for the NES by Sony. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Developed by Technos, which is no longer around. Yeah. Whew, that was a good one. I love that game. It's really fun. It's and on. It's a. Considered rare, but now it's not anymore. It's available on uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's All right. Cool game. That, that's more like Windjammers than anything else, too. That's, like that's what box and stuff. Yeah. We got close there with Windjammers, sort of. Well, Man, Windjammers yeah. is a Super Nintendo game. Yeah, but you know they got very similar vibes. Not yeah. even like that. Never that came out on Neo Geo. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Not even Super Nintendo. And I can't even picture Super Dodgeball as an arcade game. That, that's total news to me. It was based on, it was like loosely based on an arcade game. That's Super cool. Do- Super Dodgeball. And part of the yeah. Kunio Kun. So it's uh, part of the uh, River City Ransom. Yep. Yeah. They all cinematic, go to the same. Cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you for the suggestion, John from Baltimore. I think you have permission to at Sam. Yeah. That's right. And that is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Uh, don't forget, Summer of Gaming is now kicking off next week, Wednesday, June 10th. Uh, please be excited. Everybody have a good weekend. Thank you, Oops. Justin. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, John. My Thank name you. is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out. <laughs>